Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is William Morgan. <laughs> Have you heard of me? Oh, well, what about William Morgan, the translator of the Bible? No. What about the Bishop William Morgan, the great man that translated the Bible into Welsh? <laughs> no. Well, let me tell you a bit of my history then. I was born in the year 1545 in a house called Timaur Wibernant near the village of Penmachno in North Wales. That house is still standing today. Great builders around then, you see, and you may visit it if you wish. <laughs> now, when I was a little boy, I had a good friend called Edmund Priest, and we went to school together, you see. Well, there weren't schools back then, like the schools you go to today, but we were invited by a wealthy local man called John Wynne O'Widder to visit his house and to be educated with his son, Morris Wynne. And this education became very important in our history because, you see, it meant that I was able to go to a great college in England called... Cambridge University. The problem was that Cambridge University was 200 miles away from my home. Now, how do you travel 200 miles today? In a car, maybe? Yes. By train? <laughs> On an aeroplane? <laughs> how do you think I had to travel all the way to the university in Cambridge? Yes, I had to walk all the way. Well, today it's only very famous people who raise money for charities that walk for 200 miles. <laughs> but I had no choice. 200 miles. 20 miles a day from dawn till dusk. Oh, I had blisters on my feet by the time I reached Cambridge. But I was so glad to get there, to be educated, you see, to learn about the religions of the world, the history of the world. And I learned languages. By the time I'd left Cambridge University, I was fluent in six languages. I wonder if you can recognize them. <clears throat> the first language. Dithda. The Enu i William Morgan. Cymraeg, Welsh. Good day to you. My name is William Morgan. English. Bonjour. Je m'appelle William Morgan. French. Et est nomen meum Williamus Morganus. Latin. To onimai moi enai, William Morgan. Greek. And finally, Shalom, Shnian William Morgan. Hebrew. Very important languages in the history of the world. Now, when I was a young boy, the king of the land was a man called Henry VIII. Back then, everybody in Wales spoke Welsh and Welsh only. Even in England, in the counties of Herefordshire and Shropshire, people spoke Welsh. But King Henry VIII wasn't very happy about this at all, which is a bit strange because his father, Henry VII, came from Pembrokeshire in South Wales, and his great-great-grandfather came from Anglesey, and he spoke Cymraeg like the farmers of Ynys Morn, like that he did. But Henry VIII said, Wales is now part of England. A part of England? So this means Wales isn't a nation anymore. And King Henry said, Only those who speak English will get a job. Does this mean that the people of Wales, who can hardly speak English at all, and given a job by you, Henry VIII. 
Yes, it seems. Well, this meant that many people in Wales who had a little bit of money learnt a little bit of English to get on the world under Henry VIII, you see. And of course, I was fluent in English. And it meant that I had my first job as a vicar of Llanbadarn Vaur Church near Aberystwyth. Religion at the time was very complicated. Let me try and explain to you. Now, before I was born, the first of the Tudor kings was this man, Henry VII. Henry VII followed the Catholic faith, and the head of the Catholic Church was the Pope in the Vatican in Rome. And because the king, Henry VII, was Catholic, you, the people of the land, had to be Catholic too. And you were very happy with that in Wales. You'd been Catholic for centuries. But Henry VII died. Oh. His son, Henry VIII, became king. Now, Henry VIII, at the beginning, was Catholic too. But he wasn't a happy man. He wanted to divorce his wife. But you couldn't do anything then unless you asked the Pope first. And so Henry VIII went to see the Pope and asked for a divorce. And the Pope said, no, Henry VIII wasn't a happy man. And he decided to leave the Catholic Church. And he joined a new religion in Europe at the time, the Protestants. He made himself the head of the Protestant church. You can do things like that, you see, when you're a king. And it meant that he got every penny that you put in that collection box on a Sunday. <laughs> but Henry VIII eventually died. Now, his son became king, Edward VI. He was a young boy about your age, and he decided to follow his father in the Protestant faith. And so you, the people of the land, were still Protestants. But despite being a young man, he didn't live for long. And after six years, Edward VI died. His sister then became queen, and her name was Mary Tudor. Now, Mary had married a Spaniard and lived in Spain. Hola, Mary. And she followed the Catholic faith. In fact, she hated Protestants. So much, she decreed that 300 Protestants were to be killed. She hated Protestants so much, Mary decided that Protestants who were already buried in their graves had to be dug up just to make sure they were dead. And how were they to be killed this time, Mary? Burn them! Yes, she decreed that these Protestants who were already dead were to be burnt, just in case. But Mary eventually died. Her sister, Elizabeth I, then became queen. And Elizabeth I decided to follow her father, Henry VIII, in the Protestant faith, which meant that you now had to be Protestants. <laughs> well, not quite, because Elizabeth I said that it was all right for Catholics and Protestants to live in the land together. And eventually, we had some peace. But there was another little thing that complicated things a little. You see, the Pope spoke a language that you, the people of the land, didn't speak. The Latin language. And everything that happened in church, in the Catholic Church, was in Latin. Well, Elizabeth I decided to popularise the Protestant churches. And so she said that every vicar in Wales had to speak the language of the land, which was, of course, Cymraeg, Welsh, yes. And she also decreed that the Welsh Bible was to be translated into the Welsh language, of course. What do you think happened next? By this time, I was the vicar of a parish in mid Wales called Llan Rhyadr Mochnant, and I'd married my new wife, 
Catherine. We were sitting down for a bit of Sunday lunch, everything apart from the potatoes. They hadn't reached the land yet. And suddenly there was a knock on the door. A man stood there with a scroll. Well, I read the scroll and it demanded that I left immediately for London for a meeting with Queen Elizabeth I. <laughs> Had a word with my wife first, of course, and off I sped for London. Eventually, and after a long, long time, I reached the city of London. And there she was, Queen Elizabeth, sat on her throne. Well, Yes, Your Majesty, you called for me. I did. I want you to translate something for me. Of course, Your Majesty, no problem. Would that be a little note to the King of Spain, maybe? Or a nasty little letter to the Pope? <laughs> no. This. This. The Bible. But... Uh, your Majesty, this has only just been translated to English and it took 20 people to do it. Do you want me to translate this all on my own into Cymraic Welsh? Well, it might be take me a long, long time and I might be dead by the end. But seeing that you are the Queen, of course, Your Majesty. And off I sped, back to Llanrhea de Remochnant. Well, for the next 10 years, I was a very busy man. I had no time to shave or cut my hair even. After 10 years, I'm sure I looked like this. I had to carry on translating, you see. I used a feathered quill and ink. Goose feather was my favorite. Well, all my writing work had to be done on goat skin, you see, because paper or parchment was very expensive back then. Oof, I had work ahead of me. 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. Here we go. In the beginning, in initia, un a dechriad, dixit autem deus et firmament acaeli. Oh dear, have you got a dictionary? Well, I was busy for the next ten years, but eventually my Bible was ready to be presented to the people of Wales and Queen Elizabeth. You see, it would be very easy today. You'd write everything on a computer, send it on email to a printer, but back then the printing press had only just been created by a man called William Caxton. And another very important printer, a man called Johann Gutenberg from Germany, came all the way to Linden to help me to publish the Bible. Ten years, I was eventually there. A fanfare, please! The year was 1588. A very important year in the history of our country. Because that's when I, the Bishop William Morgan, presented this Bible in Welsh for the first time to the people of Wales and to Queen Elizabeth. Well, my Bible was highly commended and the Queen decided to give me the two most important jobs in the church in Wales. She made me Bishop of St Asaph in North Wales and Bishop of Llandaf down south. The people of Wales enjoyed reading my Bible. Many people started reading for the first time. And although Elizabeth's idea was to popularize the Protestant faith, she also succeeded in popularizing the Welsh language. And many, many years later, hundreds of years later, people all over Wales still speak Cymraeg, the Welsh language, and many say that is because of my hard, hard work over ten years translating the Bible into our language. 
Remember my name? The Bishop William Morgan. Hulvaur, goodbye.